Hello viewer, welcome to Science Hub. My name is Gloria Kaleha from Loreto Convent Valley Road in Form 3. And I'm Masha Abila from the same school. Today we're going to do back titrations. In the last series of volumetric analysis, we did acid-based titrations and double indicator titrations. And today we're doing back titration. So back titration is the determination of unknown quantities of a reactant by reacting it with an excess of an acid or a base. So in our practical, we shall be determining the value of X. We are provided with one molar hydrochloric acid. Four point eight grams per decimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide solution as solution N. This is solution M, the acid. We are required to determine the value of X in the formula MOH brackets X as the substrate. So the procedure we shall measure 50 cubic centimeters of solution M into a 250 ml beaker. Solution M, the acid, and a 50 cubic centimeters measuring cylinder. Then we'll add all of solid G into the mixture, solid G into the mixture until all of it reacts. So all of it has reacted and we shall add it to a 250, 250 ml volumetric flask. And then we'll top up with distilled water up to the mark. And then label it solution K.
fill the burette with solution K. And then pipette 25 cubic centimeters of solution N. Solution N which was sodium hydroxide. Yes, you pipette it. So that's 25 cubic centimeters. And we're supposed to put it into the conical flask. Then we'll add two to three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. You can see the color change. And then titrate with solution K, which is in the burette. So the first reading is 29.3.
So the volume of the acid used is the final reading minus the initial reading, which was zero because we began when the burette was full. So we shall top up the burette to the zero mark and repeat the procedure. <coughs> So I pipette, I pipette 25 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide. So that is 25 cubic centimeters. Then we add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator. You can see the color change. Then the titrate. change from pink to colorless. So the reading 29.1 we we'll repeat the procedure again the last time. So we top up our billet.
and we'll pipette 25 cubic centimeters of sodium hydroxide Then we add the indicator phenolphthalein two drops. There's a color change from colorless to pink. Change. So now we are going to take the reading 29.0. So the first question calculate the average tighter volume. The average tighter volume. Then the second question is to calculate the concentration of solution N in moles per liter. We are given the relative molecular mass as for sodium 23 and for So from the question, we are told that there are 4.8 grams per decimeter cube. And first, we have to get the relative molecular mass of sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide, the relative molecular mass is 23 plus 16 for oxygen plus 1, which is equals to 40 grams. This is the relative molecular mass for sodium hydroxide. 
Then we are given that 4.8, there are 4.8 grams per decimeter in the sodium hydroxide. So we we'll say one mole is 40 grams. What about 4.8? Zero point one two. Zero point one two per liter. Then to calculate the moles of N in twenty five cubic centimeters. So we already know that in a thousand cubic centimeters or one liter, we have 0 0.12 moles. So 0 0.12 moles are in a thousand cubic centimeters, which is also one liter. How about 25 cubic centimeters? 0 0.12 times 25 over a thousand zero point zero zero three three moles so these are the moles present in 25 cubic centimeters of n and then calculate the moles of k in the average tighter volume so in the reaction, we know that an acid plus a base gives us salt plus water. So we have the base, which is sodium hydroxide plus the hydrochloric acid to give us sodium chloride plus water, H2O. State symbols. So you can tell already that the mole ratio is 1 is to 1. Therefore, 0 0.03 and also 0 0.03 moles because these are the number of moles of the hydroxide. So the number of moles or the, the moles of K in the average tighter volume, the number of moles in K is 0 0.03 moles. 0.03 and then calculate the moles of K in 250 cubic centimeters we have already seen that the moles of K in 25 cubic centimeters is 0 0.003 so these are in the tighter volume which was 29.1 so what about 250 Zero point zero two five. Then we have been told to calculate the moles of M that reacted with solid G. So we all know that the burette has. 50 cubic centimeters and we have been given the molarity of hydrochloric acid as one molar so we we'll say one mole is in a thousand cubic centimeter how about the 50 cubic centimeters it will be 50 over a thousand which is 0 0.05 moles so these are the moles provided for us 
to get the number of moles that have reacted, we will take the moles that remain from the moles that are provided to get those that reacted. So it's 0 0.05 minus 0 0.025 to give us 0 0.05. No, point zero two five. Sorry. So these are the moles that reacted. Then we are given the RMM of solid G as seventy four. Then we are told to calculate the moles of the formula, which we had at the beginning of the experiment, as M O H into brackets x so this is what rmm is 74 grams since it was solid g then its mass as given from the practical was 0 0.8 grams so from here we can say that uh, one mole is in 74 grams what about 0 0.8 grams it is 0 0.8 over 74 to give us 0 0.011 moles so these are the moles of MOH into brackets X and then the last question, hence determine the value of x in M, OH, OH, X. We know that for a monobasic acid, a monobasic acid has only one hydrogen atom, like for example, HCl. So in a monobasic acid, the, the general formula could be HX. If it was being reacted with a base, say, sodium hydroxide, the modulation would be 1 to 1. If it was a dibasic acid, dibasic as, acid whose formula is something like that, for example, sulfuric acid, the mole ratio would be 1 to 2. And the same goes on for a basic acid. So in our formula, the hydroxide is M hydroxide, and we are looking for X, reacting with hydrochloric acid. So the ratio would, will be 1 to X because the same as this like it was for the examples we've shown above and we know that the moles of hydroxide that have been used are 0 0.011 from the calculations we have had before and the moles of the acid that were used were 0 0.025 this one's therefore 0 0.011 times x will be equal to 1 times 0 0.025 and x will be 0 0.025 divided by 0 0.0112 2, which is approximately 2. Therefore, the value of X is 2. This marks the end of this session of Science Hub. Thank you for watching.